Getting to know them personally with interviews on rock made of metal. I'm Chris Howarth from the band In This Moment, and I play guitar. Awesome, and right now you're on This Is Like the first day of your tour in the UK, if I'm right in saying. Tell us, a, just give us a little bit of basic info, just if we're cool. Um, well, we've been over here a few times over the years. Um, this is our first time with our new record out. Um, we just finished a little bit of a, the first half of the European tour, and it went amazing, so we're really excited for these shows. It's going to be good. Absolutely. Um, so it sounds like you've got some like new stuff coming over here as well too. Now it's obviously kind of settled a little bit as well. Is it kind of like that less pressure on the new record a bit, or are you just excited just to see how the UK fans pick it up? Um, well, judging from the European fans, you know, we never we've never headlined over here at all. So we're bringing a bunch of our stuff. Not everything we have in the states, but we got a bunch of stuff, you know, for our show. It's quite a theatrical thing. Um, no one over here has seen that from us yet. But judging from the reaction from the European fans, which we've never headlined over there either, and they were, they were showing up, lots of them uh, dressed up, they knew all the words. It was really surprising to us, you know, we just didn't know what to expect. And most of these shows we're hearing are already close to selling out, if not sold out. Um, so we're expecting more of the same, and we're really excited because we, you know, we've been waiting for a long time for things to pop over here, you know, and, I, and it feels, we're feeling it now from the European part of it, so I, and I feel like the UK is going to be even better. Exactly. Yeah, well, I mean, even this is the first day as well, so, I mean, uh, this is a headline tour as well, if this is yeah. the first one, I mean, can you get, go over, like, how that, how do you must be feeling about that as well, too? Like, well, I mean, like, like I said, we were nervous at first, because our, our management and, and our booking agent over here was really, like, telling us that you guys should headline, you guys need to do this, and the last time we were actually over here was, we were with Hailstorm supporting them. Uh, in 2012, and before that it was 2009. There's big gaps. We've never had lines, so we're just like, are you crazy, man? We don't want to come over there. We're, you know, no one's going to show up. You know, do, are we even popular? You know, we didn't know anything. And they said, trust us. We think it's going to be good. Just do it. So we we made it happen. And, and after the first show, it was just becoming really apparent. Like, wow, this is cool. Because in the states, something really happened for us with, with the last two albums. You know, we really kind of popped over there, and our shows were way bigger and. and just everything changed for us, and so we didn't really know what to expect here, but we're seeing that it is kind of happening here too, and we're really excited for the future to keep coming back and follow up and build this here like we've done in the States. Oh, you were saying a little bit there about how something just sort of popped there as well too. I mean, like, have you ever kind of like thought that over in terms of what exactly that was in terms of what happened? Yeah, I mean, I think I think we, we basically, before we did our last album, Blood, the original band that was in this moment for the first four out or three albums, all quit. It was just me and Maria, or Maria and I, sorry. And we went in the studio and created Blood with our producer Kevin Churko and decided we were going to up the whole visual part of it and create a show, you know, an image and everything to go with it. And the music style changed a little bit because we didn't have any other people to ask what they thought but us, you know, it was just us creating it. And I think with that creation of that record and the decision to not be afraid anymore and just try new stuff and build the show, worked. You know, and it took us like a year or so of touring over there to really start seeing the growth. And then with Black Widow coming out now, you know, on a major label, Atlantic Records, and everything just went up, up, and up over there. So we're hoping that to do that here too. You were talking about kind of the show that you put on there as well too. I mean, like there's kind of a lot of the uh, like in terms of the themes that you put on there as well too. It's a sort of like dark, sex, like kind of like the dark, a lot of sexual themes in there as well too. I mean, what was kind of the backdrop for something like that? Well, it's not really like sexual to be sexual. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. But no, no, I get what you're saying. It definitely is sexy. I mean, we got beautiful women up there. Uh, Maria had, has all these crazy ideas, you know, for each song of, of what she's wanting to present image-wise from herself. And, you know, we've, we've, we have a couple of dancers we call the Blood Girls. They're amazing and they have these things. Maria works really hard with them. Like, they'll, they'll rehearse for, you know, four weeks by themselves for a tour before the band even comes in and starts rehearsing the music, you know, to, to get the, the stage routine down. And we put a lot of time and effort into that, and some of the stage design that we have here, it's really stripped down because we, you know, we had to ship it over from the United States, but we still have some of it, some of the props and things, and it just creates a different mood for each song, basically, is what we're showing everybody. You know, each song has its own look and setup. And also, I mean, obviously this is your first time on the UK, you know, headline tour as well. Yeah, and obviously from logistics, it sounds like you kind of had to strip back. But was there any other decision to, because obviously, you know, a different country might be in a different way of appreciating a gig, you know. So was there any kind of that consideration before this tour? I think we wanted to bring everything we had. We knew we couldn't bring it all. And we were kind of just concerned about not bringing everything. We wanted people to see what we have. And we definitely weren't afraid of anyone not getting it here. 
you know, we felt, we feel like over here, everyone's going to get it even more than in the States, you know, because it's something, it's just different, and, you know, it just feels like it will be received well over here to us. So we, we didn't have any fears of that. It was just basically the only thing we were afraid of was we want to bring everything, but we can't. You know, this tour, this whole tour is pretty much like, because what we're doing in the States, we're playing in theaters, you know, that have big stages and we have plenty of room. And we knew going into this whole tour that it was going to be stripped down. So we had to make everything smaller, the drum sets smaller, the little risers are smaller. And you'll see tonight, we're, we're, we're definitely crammed up there, but it still looks good. We're still presenting the show as best we can here. And, and you know, we feel like this is a stepping stone process. So we'll start here and then the next time, hopefully we can move up to some bigger places and eventually we'll be you know, playing in the same kind of places that we play in the States. It's, that's our plan, is to just grow it continually and bring everything. So we're putting on the exact same show all over the world. Okay, no problem. Um, one of the other things I was kind of noticing as well, you kind of brought up a little bit in terms of the whole spectacle of the show as well too, and obviously about the music-wise as well. If that's just something that made that pop then, um, do you kind of place more importance on the spectacle of the show as opposed to the music? Or like, what's the kind of relationship there then? In terms of We've always, since the beginning of the band, because people have always, you know, talked about how we're just, you know, a hot chick with nice boobs and all that. They always go to that first, you know, and we've always said we're about the, the we're a real band and we're about the music first. And so when we go in the studio, we're not thinking of the show. We're thinking of writing the, the best songs we can and the coolest album and making it awesome. So when people are listening to it, they're going through in their minds, they're visualizing things and they're having emotions and feeling it. And then we want to add on top of that an amazing show. So if you were if you were deaf and you couldn't even hear the album, but you could see what's happening on stage, it would evoke some kind of emotion. Combining the two is like a you know a one-two punch, and that was the plan. It, but music is always first. The song is always first. Well, one of the other things I want to question about more directly, like, is the whole that, of, like, chicks with boobs kind of thing as well. Like, I personally believe that it's not just sex for sex sake, but you must have that kind of problem of when you're trying to promote this kind of image or, you know, like, trying to, like, create this, like, this kind of, you know, well, this image. Um, like, how that trend that fine line versus, like, sexual themes for the sake of, you know, art on versus sex for sex sake. I mean, how do you, like, kind of tread that line there? Well, you know, Maria's... She's the sexy one in the band, you know what I mean? And it's n I've never in my entire time of hearing her ever say, I want to do this because it's going to be really sexy. She comes up with these outfits and what she wears and stuff out of her own mind. And, and I know she's sexy and she knows that she looks good. She wouldn't wear it if she didn't look good in it. But it's never about trying to be sexy just to, to be sexy. And that's kind of like with the song we have, Sex Metal Barbie. It's a, it's a, it's a joke. It's like a flipping it around, kind of like the song Whore where we're taking everybody's, because that's all people, sex metal, and we're trying to use sex to sell, and we took that and basically flipped that around in that song, you know, because it's, it's, it's like a joke. It's, it's really who we are is what we are, and we're just doing it, and she comes up with these ideas for her outfits and for the girls' outfits and, and the choreography and stuff like that, and it just is what it is, but it's definitely not thought of, like, let's just try to be sexy, to be sexy and create a sexy show. We want it to be sexy, dirty, make you it just evoke emotion you know okay, cool. but is it hard to like tread that line though you know what i mean because it could very easily be taken up as one way you know what i mean it's i guess it's not really hard we don't even think about it because we're not trying to to tread any line we're just doing what we're doing some people are going to like it some people aren't going to like it and it's funny the the more popular that we get the more people that don't like it are more vocal about how much they don't like it and all that does is help us become more known and talked about you know so it's it's a fun, it's a funny thing that we've noticed is now that we're popular more people hate us but that's really awesome because that means you're doing good if people are hating you you know so and you're getting a reaction and we're getting a reaction but we're not we're not trying to be careful either way we're just kind of doing what we're doing and letting the chips fall where they where they may fair enough, fair enough. hey what's up this is chris from in this moment and you're watching rock made of metal click here to subscribe and click here to watch videos I'm fallen sick like me